Howard Bentham. It's Wednesday breakfast, BBC Hereford and Worcester. I'm Howard Bentham. The parents of a former rugby player from Worcestershire who helped him travel to Switzerland for an assisted suicide won't be prosecuted. An investigation is underway after a nurse has raised concerns about the way patients are treated at a Herefordshire hospital. You've got £3.1 million pounds to cut off for the budget in the next financial year. Can you explain what's You've going on? You've admitted breaking the law. You are the Home Secretary. This must affect your position. Well, I don't believe it does. It 164 for one is the score at T. England won the toss. Batted. Uh, Andrew Let's hope uh, that justice is done and Alexandra wins. What are you going to do when uh, life returns to something like normal then? We'll be dancing on ice in January. <laughs> <laughs> Howard Bentham. You've admitted breaking the law. You are the Home Secretary. This must affect your position. Well, I don't believe it does. It was wrong. Um, actually, I think what people want from their politicians is people who are straight, but actually who get on with the job. And that's why today what I'll actually be thinking about is how we, can we make sure that the third reduction in crime we've seen over the last 10 years is continued? How can Are the government sure uh, going to change the grading of cannabis? Well, the Prime Minister said yesterday, and I think he's right, that next week when we launch the consultation on the next stage of the drug strategy, it's right to look at the message that we send through the classification of cannabis. And what about the, the message this is sending to, to young people uh, and, and the drug takers of whatever age in your constituency in Redditch? Well, I think the important message for the people in my constituency in Redditch and what they've usually asked me about is, look, if my child or if I've got a drug problem, can I get into drug treatment? You've admitted taking it. Was it a, a drug problem or was it a, a quick puff at university? It was a few quick puffs, Howard, and it was wrong. And uh, now I think what's important is that I get on with making sure that I help others. He had three other people in that car that he was responsible for. And at the end of the day... That's where that's where my anger feels is is with the driver. It's obviously still very raw and still very painful. But could you ever see a time that you would be able to forgive? Not at the moment. I can't. No. You know, somebody has been responsible for changing the rest of my life and my son's life. We're here with a special street party this morning. They've been flooded in. They've been cut off from humanity. But does it get them down in Upton upon Seven? No! Of course it doesn't. We bought uh, <laughs> not surprising the amount of food and drink they got through this morning. My word! Yes, the license fee has been well and truly spent this morning. Let's have a quick word with uh, Patrick Tanzi, who's uh, our resident uh, comedian. In fact, we had you in in the dimmest, darkest days of the winter, didn't we, to tell us a few lines? That's right. Yeah, it was kind of uh, reminiscent of that somehow or other. But we lightened everything up and hope we bring a little sunshine as well today. It's a great atmosphere here. Howard Bentham. Howard Bentham. When you go and see the car that your daughter was in, which I needed to do because I was so scared to think that she'd have been there suffering and in pain. And even though you were reassured by what the police had told you, I still had it in my mind that, you know, perhaps they hadn't checked her and she was still, still alive. But when I actually went to see the car, I knew myself then that it was instant and that she felt no pain. Seeing the car made me more angry because whether it had been on that particular road or on a motorway, he had three other people in that car that he was responsible for. And at the end of the day, that's where, that's where my anger feels, is, is with the driver. It's obviously still very raw and still very painful, but could you ever see a time that you would be able to forgive? Not at the moment, I can't, no. You know, somebody has been responsible for changing the rest of my life and my son's life. You know, how can you ever forgive somebody that's taken away your daughter? You say about your strength with uh, the family, your friends supporting you, but personally, it hits home hard, and I guess hardest being being mum. But how have you dealt with the dark days? At the moment, I tend not to stop to be truthful. I tend to have to be busy all the time. I do get a lot of moments on my own with Joe. I mean, I'm, I'm really lucky. A lot of people moan about mobile phones. But to me, that's my lifeline at the moment. I can listen to her favourite music on it. There's part of a video on there where she's talking to my nan, who'd had a, a drink too many. Um, <laughs> and she's, she's asking her nan to, to sing and everything. And all you can hear is her laughing and her, yeah. her bubbly voice in the background and... 
you know, and just look through her pictures and spend time with her. And I've got her favourite jacket that she always used to wear, and that's by my bedpost. And, and I write to her in a diary as well. Started writing to her in a diary every day of how I feel and how much I miss her. You're a tough cookie, though, aren't you? Or are you? You've got me on a good day. <laughs> You've got me on a good day. A Hereford United fan is in danger of falling out with his partner at the very time they should be pulling together. Matt Powell's partner is due to give birth on Friday. Yes, the day of his team's big FA Cup clash with Leeds United. And guess which team she supports? You got it, Leeds United. Matt, hello. Hello. <laughs> Can't be easy in your house at the minute. No, no, divided loyalties and all that. You really haven't got divided loyalties, surely. <laughs> well, like I said, um, I prefer... A uh, boy, uh, but obviously I'd like a Hereford United win as well. Right. <laughs> Which of those is the priority? Well, I think if it's a boy, Hereford will win, so uh, <laughs> a boy. Are you definitely going to be there? Are you going to be holding Louise's hand on Friday? Um, hopefully, yes. Hopefully the baby comes on time. Right. Oh, it's a case of on time. It's not a, a induction or anything or inducement or whatever. No, this is it. Friday is its due date. It's its due date. All right. So you never know. It might be late. It might be a Leeds United fan. It might just sort of hang around in the lower divisions for a little bit longer. That's right. Yeah, it could do. But uh, I think it'll be on time. <laughs> Bang on time. Half past seven or eight o'clock on Friday. You wait. <laughs> so you're going to be taking the radio into the uh, delivery suite then and have BBC Hereford and Worcester on for full match commentary. Of course. That's the way round it, isn't it? You see, there's always a happy medium in life. You've got to get give and take, haven't you? That's what I keep saying, saying to Louise, give and take, you know. I can have the headphones on and be delivering the baby. <laughs> I guess uh, there won't be an argument about which colour to paint the uh, the nursery, will there? Oh, no, no, just there's only two colours it can be. Well, yeah, at least you're not playing white, so... <laughs> 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 I think you've got away with it, haven't you, really? Yeah. So you're going to stay supportive, even if Leeds win this, because it, it can't be easy being, you know, sort of that close to a Leeds United fan. No, it can't, especially when obviously they're a lot larger club than us and they've, got, they've had a lot more to celebrate over the years. Well, actually, no, Hereford's had more to celebrate over the last five years. But, uh, yes, it's, uh, it's, it's finally uh, it's Hereford's time to shine. Louise, uh, if we can have a quick word with her, you can just pass the phone over, yeah, Matt. No problem. I, th- I think you've almost uh, tried to paint yourself as Millennium Man. I don't think he did a great job at it, though. Louise, what, what are you doing Hi. with your fella? He, he's stuck in the, the 1870s. <laughs> What you see, he wants a little boy that can play for Hereford. That's why I've got to have a girl. My word, you sound like a Leeds United fan. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I've been down here years and I've still got a real strong accent. My daughter thinks it's hilarious. You've, got, you've already got a 10-year-old, haven't you? I've got a 10-year-old girl who's got a local accent and she just finds my accent really funny. She thinks oh, I'm putting it on. <laughs> that's lovely. Uh, is she a Leeds or a Hereford fan, your little girl? Oh, she she's, does know nothing about football, bless her. She's a, a girly girl. <laughs> I think you still have girly girls that like their football. Yeah, you can. She's she's the more of a you ballet tap prima donna type child, really. <laughs> Fair enough. And how's everything going with the pregnancy? You're all fine and dandy. It's been textbook. Yeah, it's been really perfect. I've not been sick or anything, so that's why we're anticipating that it should come on time. There's been no no problems with it. Oh right. So you reckon everything's going to go to plan? Are you going to sort of kick and fuss about having the radio on with the the full match commentary from BBC <laughs> Hereford or Worcester in the background? Oh, that be good wouldn't it if you could just intersperse a few come on girl push <laughs> that might help might it I tell, we'll have a word with trevor owens because i'm sure he wouldn't mind doing that <laughs> because he does all sorts of stuff in his commentary get in! There you <laughs> it's more of a case of get out if it makes it come quicker i'm quite happy for that to happen <laughs> <laughs> how long were you in labor with your other little girl sorry well, what's her name not, um, chloe how long, how long are you in labour with Chloe? Three and a half hours. Not too bad, actually. Well, I tell you what, 90 minutes would sort of work, 90 it? minutes would be beautiful, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. 15 minutes for half-time. So I'll tell you what you could do. Sort of push for 45 minutes, have an orange. Yeah. Uh, and then... <laughs> And then start again after that. I don't need a midwife, do I? I need a referee, really. <laughs> <laughs> a fellow with a whistle is what I need in there. <laughs> <laughs> that might have been the problem already, but... Uh, we'll, we'll... <laughs> My lords, ladies and gentlemen on the flying trapeze, the amazing, daring, slightly older man, Howard Bentham. <laughs> hey! Get on with this! Yeah, yeah. OK, right, I'm, I'm now right-handed, hanging on to uh, this thing, and my feet just do not want to move. I've got to, Anton's just telling me to spread my legs a little bit wider here and just centre the balance, right? As soon as my left hand comes off here, then, Anton... And then, OK, you got... So I'm going to grab the bar now. Oh, my God, I am now leaning over 30 feet up. OK. 
Okay, I'm sitting down, sitting down on my knees, on my heels. Okay, I'm going. Okay, I can't get much further than that. I must admit. Okay. Okay. He's precarious on the edge here. Yeah. Come on, Howard. Okay, time to go. Come on, Howard. Let's go. Feet off. And, and he's swinging. Oh my word! Oh my word! Oh yes, what a fantastic feeling this is.